So there are a lot of ways of doing lighting, of controlling outdoor lighting, and each has its pros and cons. I want to just do a quick review of the common components out there and share what our experiences have been, because we have the we have every one of these at our site. Um, this will provide a backdrop for understanding how we arrived at our current design and approach to this program. Um, you'll see the three components on the bottom left, the mechanical time clock, below that the photo cell, and above that an electronic time clock. These are probably your most common components used for outdoor lighting control. Uh, they're all very low cost. They're all easy to install. Um, the cons would be that uh, they're all prone to uh, user errors, um, both in terms of the initial setup as well as the ongoing operation. They're all prone to getting out of calibration over time. And none of them offer a remote connection for real-time monitoring or control of the lighting system. Over on the left-hand side, um, there's a couple categorical classes that I'd like to just mention. Um, lighting controls can be installed for either circuit level control or fixture level control. Most are wired for circuit level control, meaning that anytime you turn something on and off, you are controlling a group um, of anywhere from two to ten uh, fixtures or light poles. Uh, more than that, if you're talking about uh, building lights, such as canopy lights or wall packs. But in terms of parking lot poles, um, potentially probably around four to six poles per circuit. So um, circuit level is much more common. Um, and the benefit there is you have much fewer components to install, but you have much less granularity of control. For fixture level, you have very good granularity of control in terms of being able to turn each individual pole on or off. The problem is now you have to install and maintain um, an individual controller or a piece of hardware for each one of those fixtures. Uh, that leads to much higher upfront costs and operating costs. The next category would be um, as, as these web-based controllers are becoming more and more popular to replace the uh, old go-to components um, on the left, you have proprietary devices and what we would call open protocol devices. Proprietary devices come from a single vertically integrated provider. Um, they're essentially a black box. And you don't really know what's going on inside. Um, this gives you low flexibility um, over the long haul and a higher risk because you're putting all your eggs in one basket of a, of a service provider and a hardware provider. Um, open protocol uh, devices are, um, are really combinations of uh, components that uh, speak standard communication protocols. It, this gives you um, much more flexibility as well as lower risk because there's a, a network, a national network of controls contractors that can service your system. One of those communication protocols is BACnet. Um, that's why I listed their logo, uh, and there's others, there's others as well. Next slide, please. To um, just quickly explain the basic nuts and bolts of how an outdoor lighting system works and how our control system interfaces with it, um, I wanted to go over this diagram. Um, it's simplified, but includes all of the primary components you would find at almost any parking lot. Um, Electricity flows through the lighting system, coming in at the electric meter, flowing through the breaker panel to the contactors. The contactor is essentially the light switch um, that then sends electricity out to the groups of fixtures. The gateway control panel um, is essentially um, a combination of components, including a, a, a computer, a small computer, uh, an uninterruptible power supply, and a series of relays that tie into the system in two key lo locations. It measures the power flowing into the system from the meter via uh, current transducers. And yet, it also controls the contactor, which takes the place of the photocell or time clock by sending a small electrical signal to the contactor telling it to close and open, um, or in many cases, a series of contactors. This is where your overrides and your scheduling um, take place. Um, 
And then finally, the, the control panel uh, sends and receives updates to Kimco servers through a cellular internet connection. Next slide, please. I wanted to just go over uh, the features of the system that we've incorporated. Um, on the top left, uh, alarms. These are received uh, via text or email by our property managers automatically from the system. It keeps them informed of what's going on at their site, including power outages, maintenance requirements, and uh, energy performance. The, on the top right, uh, the advanced scheduling. This is really the this is really the power of the system that is able to drive the energy savings. Um, it gives the system very accurate uh, dusk to dawn uh, operation, rather than relying on a on a sensor that may get out of calibration. And these times are updated daily. We're also able to offset the time the on off times based on the dusk and dawn calculations. We're able to uh, provide them an intuitive way of setting up night lighting schedules for certain circuits to stage off at night, and you'll see a significant portion of the savings is driven by that feature. Um, they can also enter custom schedules. And then finally, there's a, a tool that basically gives them the estimated energy savings um, in real time as they make their scheduling adjustments. Uh, that immediate feedback we found to be very important in, in motivating them to optimize the site's performance. Uh, the dashboard on the, on the lower right, um, this this is really, again, for the, um, the property manager to get the most out of the system. Uh, we want it to be standardized across all of our sites, and we want it to be attractive, intuitive, and accessible from anywhere. Each of our property managers carries an iPad with them, and they can log on and access their dashboards uh, from anywhere uh, that they have a, a, a cellular connection. Um, and then finally, we've adopted several guiding principles for this program. Uh, to keep it flexible and expandable. Open and standard pr communication protocols allow the system to easily integrate with other systems. And then a modular design allows us to build on the system and improve it over time and integrate it with to other systems. Um, and then, like I mentioned, um, because of these principles of the open protocols and modular design, we can rely on a large network of providers and um, and not be stuck with uh, our eggs in one basket. 